This is the Fedora Project Leaders of Legend and Lore panel, and it is amazing. Uh, I had this idea, we were talking at the Fedora Social Hour, we had this idea off the cuff and thought, wow, since we're doing a virtual event, like, this is a time we can get everybody together. Let's do it. So uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, we have all of the previous FBLs who are with us. Unfortunately, Christian Gafton passed away a couple of years ago, um, but the rest of us are all gathered together here um, and it's awesome. So we don't have anything really organized. I'm just going to ask people to go around and uh, talk and then we'll talk maybe a little bit about, about Christian who I don't, I never met personally, but, and I, I'm really sad that I didn't have that opportunity, but um, for those of you who have, we could talk about you know, his, his legacy in the project a little bit. Um, and then we'll take questions from the audience. So use the QA tab over in the chat and start filling things in. And um, I'm sure there'll be plenty of stories and chit chat and everything to go. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll start. I am Matthew Miller. I am the current Fedora project leader. And um, I've been doing this for a little while. Uh, and Robin, tell us about yourself. Uh, when were you the FPL and what are you up to these days? Hi, I'm Robin Bergeron. I was the FPL before Matt, which uh, unlike everybody else that will be talking after me, um, was not two or fewer years. Uh, that was six years ago, seven. I mean, it's, it's fuzzy. Um, but yeah, it's been a while, and since then I've been I worked a little bit on a thing called Elasticsearch for like a hot second, and then I went over to this place called Ansible, uh, which meant I got to go back to Red Hat, um, and also I got to work with Greg, um, who was FPL before me, many people before me, and was my manager. So basically, he's been my guinea pig for every job I've taken recently. Um, and when he says it's okay, then I decide that that I'll take that job as i understand it as soon as you went to work for ansible the things started working for red hat to buy the company they were like oh now yes. now yeah we'll go with that motion. absolutely that's exactly how it went down entirely um so i guess go 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 backwards down the list jared oh you are muted Let's try that again. Uh, hey, everybody, Jared Smith. I was the Fedora project leader before Robin. That's been, what, eight years ago, nine years ago? I don't know. It's been, been a long time now. Um, had a, had a lot, of, lot of fun jobs uh, since then, doing uh, lots of open source work and, and community engagement on a number of different companies. So I will pass it off to Paul. Yeah, so Paul Frields. I was the Fedora project leader from, I guess, about a 11 years ago to about 13 and a half years ago or so. Uh, I, uh, I came before Jared and uh, now I'm the director of emerging operating systems. I'm still at Red Hat uh, and uh, yeah, really enjoying it. And interestingly enough, I, uh, my, my manager is another uh, great Max Spivak recruit, uh, Mike McGrath. And I think he's in the audience. So, and he'll probably talk smack about me and that's fine. It's, it happens all the time. I'm used to it now. Well, uh, um, yeah, hi everyone, I'm Max. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, we got old. How did we get so old? When I, when I think how long ago we used to do all of this. Um, all right. It, it, is, it is almost, I was a Fedora project leader for a while. I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, something in there. I don't quite remember. Um, and and uh, it's been almost a decade, almost exactly a decade since I left Red Hat. And and I have spent those 10 years um, either uh, either running Amazon's Linux organization. Um, and, and as many people know, uh, uh, a lot of what Amazon does is, is an erstwhile cousin in the extended Red Hat family um, or doing a kind of Linux and compute virtualization for Google. So uh, here in Seattle. Wonder, and it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to see everybody. It's wonderful to see you, Max, because <laughs> nobody ever gets to see you with all the open source. So. Uh, I'm Greg. I was uh, FPO briefly a thousand years ago. Um, yeah, and then I left uh, to do some other stuff, and then I ended up uh, running community at Ansible. Uh, and 
was then Ansible got bought. So I ended up at Red Hat for a while. And then I left to work uh, for Max at, uh, at Amazon for a little bit because that was fun and I was getting a little bored. Uh, and then I decided that I'm really not suited for working anymore. So I stopped. <laughs> Wait, but so you- Today you... I'm with you in my bathrobe and- uh, uh, But you were once, that's what you're saying, right? No, <laughs> no, maybe, I don't know. I, I just really, really embraced the not fitness for work finally i don't i don't know how long that was the truth but it is definitely my truth now yeah you retired for a month that went to work to max you go work yeah, and work. then said and this is an like, i'm retiring again i love you max but this is still work so <laughs> greg remember remember what you told me you said max the biggest mistake you made was you let me take a month off before i started that's right started. That's right. wow <laughs> this is what retirement is like i'm going to work again am i stupid <laughs> so yep michael you're you're left yeah reverse order uh michael johnson mkj I, I really got Fedora project started, uh, worked out within Red Hat what it would mean to build a community distribution. And I left after Fedora Core 1, went off to do a startup with Eric Tron. That one didn't, didn't go so well. I went all the way from startup into the very entrenched enterprise and spent some years at SAS. That was interesting, helped bring some open source uh, experience and ideas there. Uh, and then uh, about just about five years ago, I went to work at Pendo and I've been having a lot of fun there too. Oh. It's uh, that's uh, always. I will say it's always a interesting ride working with Eric Tron. So this is the, the my third time doing that, and it's uh, absolutely great. Eric is someone you might recognize from the very beginning of a lot of very old spec files in Fedora Linux. If you look look back at those things, you'll see his name. Yep, still Oot. Well, and we've got we've got Smooch here on the side as the official Fedora Red Hat historian, so he can fill in all the gaps. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Indeed. Um, yeah. So uh, we, we are missing someone. Um, Max, I think you had something. Yeah, prepared. yeah. I, I can I can say a word or two. We 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 all as we were all getting excited and 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 thinking about uh, having this panel and 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 sort of a very unique opportunity for a for a very fun and hopefully vaguely amusing reunion. Um, uh, Christian Gafton was on the mind of a lot of us. A number of us worked worked closely with him at different times. Some folks some folks maybe never met him. I know folks in the audience um, also spent uh, uh, some people had more more or less interaction with him over the years, but Christian was uh, Christian was a second Fedora project leader back in 2004 and 2005. And, and as, as Matt mentioned, he, he sadly passed away um, about two and a half years ago. When I uh, when I first got to Red Hat in 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 2004, uh, Christian was already uh, already a legend. Um, he'd been the kind of lead engineer for Red Hat Linux for a number of years. And from there, he had gone to be Greg will keep me honest here, but like founder or kind of original leader of the Red Hat Network organization and 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 RHN Satellite and 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 ended up by by coincidence, right? Christian was the first then of three consecutive FPLs, Christian to Greg to myself, who all came out of the 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 RHN organization. You wouldn't think that that was the farm system for <laughs> FPLs, but it <laughs> but it, it it ended up it ended up being that way. And and um you know, I didn't really, I didn't really ever work that much with Christian directly. Um, uh, we we sort of, uh, we sort of followed each other around. Um, but but I remember I, I mentioned the FUDCON Raleigh a while back, and and one of my happiest memories was was at that FUDCON Raleigh in 08 or early 09 when a bunch of the old Red Hat alumni came by, and and I remember Christian pulled pulled a number of us aside and, and took us across the street from where we were doing the fun the FUD pub uh, to some other bar and bought us some very expensive whiskey and and talked about how he'd been following what had happened with Fedora and that he was he was really pleased with what Fedora had become and 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 I had the 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 great fortune a few years later to work directly with with Christian for about 5 years at Amazon um where where he was the lead engineer for Amazon Linux and I was I was the the engineering manager for Amazon Linux and uh, one of the best things that ever that ever happened to me was a chance to work that closely with him and and uh, folks will be 
happy to know that that the legend of Gafton is alive and well at Amazon as well, and people still talk about Yum's Gafton mode settings, and um, uh, um, and and that and that he and his Linux knowledge and his Linux leadership um, are quoted chapter and verse um, in in Amazon's Linux engineering meetings to this day. Um, and, oh my! How did Christian Christian was from another country? How did he learn to speak English? <laughs> Um, but but uh, but anyway, I'm uh, I'm getting a little emotional, and I don't want to hijack the session. But but um, he was a wonderful, wonderful man and a wonderful engineer, and and uh, we just didn't want to do this without acknowledging him. And if anyone else wants to say something, go ahead. But I just wanted to say that Christian Thanks said that he that. learned English by uh, uh, watching Pulp Fiction over and over. Whether that is true, uh, I, I have no way of knowing. But that's that's what he claimed. <laughs> Uh, and and from his vocabulary, one has no reason to doubt that claim. Yeah. No, I remember him saying that he was not, um, um, he didn't follow the rules enough in school to be allowed to study English in school, so he had to pick it up on the side. It was that and um, documentation for a UUCP package. You've got to learn the technology, the language to learn the technology, and you're inspired by it. That makes sense. I was going to say, if if like listening to Pulp Fiction a bunch of times didn't do it, that certainly would. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we do have some questions here. Um, and the first one is from Robin, which is, how could we possibly schedule this session against one that was named beefy miracle we we're actually talking about that before you arrived I, I i don't know how that happened it seems tra like a horrible tragedy and i'm sorry we'll never let that happen again um, hugs to mr gallagher uh, hugs to mr gallagher you know, all around i think running that session. um but a related question here also is what is your favorite fedora code name of all time is other it beefy than, miracle for everybody or does someone have a different favorite yeah i don't know if that's i don't know if that's even a question beefy yeah. miracle or bust Z second favorite could be zod zod was pretty good that was going to be my choice that's pretty good i, I, mean, I know I, there was some wrangling to make zod be the answer even though it was very hard to get it to come around to that in the actual naming scheme we, yeah we got creative didn't we <laughs> when well, there's a will there's a way and and who who remembers the uh, who remembers the intense effort after Zod to name, I want to say seven. I think Zod was six. I, I didn't do my research, but to name seven nothing so that you could claim that nothing can replace Zod. But that failed. Yeah. Um, so someone asked, what are the odds of bringing the code names back? The answer is very low because. Um, I'll just say legal and we'll leave it at that. I can expand oh, yeah. some, some other time. Um, it turns out naming is hard and uh, it turns out, you know, there's a open source project somewhere that's named pretty much every word and non-word on the planet at this point. And, and numbers, I guess, are, are fair use. Yeah. So <laughs> things that are fun are least likely to be accepted. So then you end up with the worst possible names. So, um, Another well, my favorite, my favorite was when when Fedora quit using names because it was getting more and more ridiculous, and it uh, got rid of uh, having to explain the the naming system. So I was uh, uh, gung ho for just switching to numbers. Call me a heretic. Heretic. <laughs> Almost run away. I think I was the last person who actually oversaw names, and then I think Matthew, you might have been the first person who only had numbers. Yeah, I guess that's All true. Your fault. You yeah, didn't. right. I have never had a named. We didn't, we didn't need another Schrodinger's cat or uh, Heisenberg. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Also, naming your releases after problems is just asking for it. Don't do that. It disappeared, yeah. didn't it? The names disappeared <laughs> after that. Uh, uh, so, if you could define one moment from your tenure as FPL to define your time as a leader, what would that moment be for each of you? Oh, that's a deer in the headlights look there, Robin. Sorry, that was too, I'm, too serious I'm all of like, a sudden. Uh, it's not serious. It's just like, ooh, which I don't know. How, how do you choose? Why do we always have to start with me? What is yours, Matthew? I mean, you're still ongoing. Why don't you tell us yours up to this moment? Up this to, moment does no. not count. I know this is a glorious moment for you, but. but. Oh, wow. 
Right. Right. Okay. Fine. Uh, come back. Come back to me. Let someone. Someone's got an answer. Yes. Yeah. So, I I would say that it was when Red Hat had bought into the idea of Fedora, and one of the things that helped Red Hat move in this direction was you know separating community from enterprise. What's the value of enterprise? Value of community. And there had been an idea that ah, 64-bit is enterprise. So we'll just do 32-bit. And Justin Forbes uh, became Fedora 64. <laughs> and it was, it was a, it, it brought us a question that Red Hat wasn't quite prepared for yet. And so it was, is this the place where we fold, right? Or is this the place where we lean into what we've done and say, the point of this is community. The point of this is to build and make a real community um, far more than we had ever been able to do with Red Hat Linux, where it was kind of on the side. and um I, I was really pleased to see that that the um assumption that well 64-bit is enterprise when it came from the community that leadership inside red hat was able to say huh i guess we were wrong about that and start leaning into it rather than saying nope we decided that 64-bit is enterprise and the community uh, doesn't get to play in that uh, playground so i felt like that was a real defining moment for what was the relationship going to be was Red Hat going to stand behind this as a true community project or try to pretend that it was a community project? And it came down solidly on top of, of actually supporting the, the project as its own real thing and really building a community. So that was that uh, I, I, I like it set, set the project on the right road. And we're here today talking about it. OK, I've got mine now. Excellent. All right. So I will say one. Well, what was the question? My defining moment, the thing that changed everything? I guess it was probably the day when I realized that everybody who had come before me that I had talked to about this job, who kind of snarkily, jokingly said, you know, smart enough to do the job and dumb enough to take it. And I went to my boss, who was, you know, the lovely Denise students at that point, and I said, that is a bunch of crap, right? This project has grown from being very small to you know basically driving the majority of the of the revenue for what was now a billion dollar company and we still have one person dealing with this so as i hand you my letter saying me too i'm like the you know x number burnout in a row not burnout but you know just like i need to get back to having a life and like seeing my family and doing something else because I cannot sustain 80 hours a week and the emotional labor of this job. Uh, I hope, and in fact, I almost kind of require that you get some help for the next person. Red Hat can afford it. And that was really important to me. And it took about a year after I left before they, I mean, they said they were going to, and they did eventually make good on it. And lo and behold, how long have you been the FPL now? Like, I, I want to think that those things are vaguely uh. related. Um, yeah, but, it's it, yeah. it's it's seven years now, and it is directly related. That's actually one of the other questions: is how I, why I, were the I, other appeals so quick? Well, no, Matt, that's, that's, that's two birds with one stone. But uh, you know, that's, that's just, this, the the rest of us. Our question for you is exactly how the heck have you managed this? Right? Like you're the you're the you're the star of the meeting, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, no, I, a lot of it is I really had a lot of help, and it's I think. Not not just the thing that Robin set up with the the what we call the F cake, which is a unwieldy name we saddled the role with because we didn't like um, the idea of a community manager for Fedora because that didn't seem to fit what Fedora is, but we couldn't come up with a better name. So Fedora Community Action and Impact Coordinator it is. Um, so that like that position has been very helpful and then just a lot uh, of support you know, from you know, Denise and Mike and people in Linux engineering and across the company. I, I really, um, I, and I think a lot of that, Robin, like you, you set, you set me up for success in all of that support. So I really appreciate that. And, you know, from, from the community as well, uh, that's, that's been great. Um, also, I really love it. So that's been sustaining as well. Uh, you actually go on vacations. I see this on Facebook. You're like on vacations, which is something I that is like foreign <laughs> during my time in that job. Like you have someone who can put out fires if, if you're away. That's amazing. Yeah. 
or you know sometimes things are just on fire for a little bit because um they're always going to be on fire uh right exactly it's it's the nature of things in fedora to be lightly on fire um and you know i i realized somewhere in there that it's okay to sometimes you know walk let away from some of those things let 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 you know see if see if that one burns itself out and and what happens because there always is more work than can possibly be done so i you know if i, I i'm never going to carry it all so i can go on vacation sometimes and you know matthew while you're while you're talking i guess on the subject of like continuity and and setting um, future leaders up for success i mean that's something that i felt very strongly um about when Max kind of handed the baton to me, one of the things that changed radically uh, when I came on board was, well, first, you know, they had somebody who was not a Red Hatter yet who was hired into the job. That was that was me. I was the first FPL in that situation. Um, and one of the things that changed that was really radical was that the job moved in, internally in Red Hat to be part of uh, engineering. And at the time, uh, I was reporting to Tim Burke uh, who preceded Denise as the head of Linux engineering. Denise preceded Mike McGrath, who's now you know, my manager, as I mentioned. Um, and doing that, I think, ended up being like a stroke of brilliance. And I think you know, it's fair to say here, um, I think that really kind of has, has cemented the relationship between what Red Hat does internally and what Red Hat works on uh, in the community. And of course, you know, Red Hat is, you know, we, we open source everything, we do everything externally in the community um, as far as uh, you know as far as our, our source work you know we when we acquire something we you know one of our first things is hey what are we going to do about our open sourcing this um, the the fact that Max had had this and had uh, set up for this role to move to engineering um, basically the results of that are over the last you know 13 plus years uh, the word fedora is said at least once a paragraph, in any conversation about any engineering effort that happens, uh, at least in the RHEL department, and it frequently happens elsewhere as well. So, I mean, that, 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 in the engagement and that partnership, I think, were really cemented by that move. So that's something that was really important. Uh, Paul, if I could expand on that for a second, that was really awesome to hear you say that. But, but it also kind of steals not steals, but it gets into what was going to be kind of my answer to, to I don't even remember the question that, that, Matt, that Matt posed at this point, but um, I think the fact that, the fact, it was, a, it was a big moment for Fedora. You know, Michael, Michael a minute ago was talking about how, you know, his example of a moment where it was uh, that, cru that crucial moment, right, of was, was Red Hat serious about this or not? I think, I think hiring the first Fedora project leader as an external hire was another one of those crucial moments, and 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 a, and, a, and a really big deal that that sort of doubled down and and assured the the kind of credibility of of what Red Hat was was doing was doing with Fedora and um, uh, you know uh, and and you know a lot of credit to um, uh, Matthew Zulik uh, for that as well um, being so immediately recognizing of the importance of something like that and and willing to consider uh strongly you know handing handing over the the, the keys of fedora to someone who was a first-time red hatter at the same time yeah but I, I and i was i really wasn't you know i was just one i think of of several people right max who who you know for you were kind of critical to you know your story of success in fedora well, I, I, you know, I said in in the uh, when we were all chatting kind of before this and, and and thinking about thinking about Red Hat overall, at least for me, uh, for me, Red Hat has has a very deep and and never ending and, and and special and loving place in my heart because my whole career is is is, is exists because of the opportunities I had at Red Hat. But um, you know, I when I when I think back now, ten years later of of what I what I actually did as a Red Hat employee that had that had long lasting value to me the only answer to that question is Paul you getting hired Mike getting hired and another person who unfortunately can't be here today Seth the doll right like those three times when I walked into Matthew's office and said you just need to hire these people and I don't want any crap about it like I don't want any bureaucracy just do it 
And the answer every single time was yes, instantaneously. Think about the think about the resounding outsized impact of of of, of that a decade later, right? When we, you know, uh, my whole job was to find people in the community who were who wanted to do things, and just say yes, do those things. You have you have Red Hat's permission to do those things, even though at the time. I was giving that permission before I was officially FPL. I was in literally no position to give that permission. Uh, and I gave that permission anyway, because what were they going to do? Fire me? Go ahead. It was better that they fire me than, than we default on the promise that we were making about Fedora being a community distribution and not following through on that promise was just not a, not, not a thing. So, you know, so, uh, you know, I just started, you know, for me, the pivotal moment was when, so I, I left Red Hat Network for, for, for reasons. Uh, I was just like, I, I don't want to do this job anymore. Actually, no, I'll, I'll be specific. The reason I didn't want to do the Red Hat Network job anymore was because this tool called Yum was kicking our ass and eating away at our value proposition. And Yum was written by this guy named Seth Vidal. And I'm like, if there's one guy who can write this tool that gives this big chunk of our company such headaches trying to figure out how to how to how to make our product work then maybe i need to understand the open source model better right so i decided hey i'm going to go be the community guy uh and there was a a, a, a fella a, a jeremy hogan who had just left and there was a new community there the com his community position was available so i decided i wanted to do that and see what it was like uh, and I got that gig. And then uh, at the time, there was a thing called Red Hat Magazine, uh, which is, you know, has evolved many times and has essentially become opensource.com now. It's the great grandfather of that. Um, and I was going to write a Red Hat Magazine article on the great success that Fedora was. And the first person I talked to was Seth Fidal to say, hey, to tell us some good things about all, all the stuff that's going on Fedora. He was like, you don't want me to do that. I'm like, really? Why? I don't understand. I thought that Fedora was a smashing success. And he says, well, and you, you know, and Seth and I sat down over coffee or something. And he gave me a very clear uh, picture of all of the things that were not, in his opinion, a success. And mostly it was Red Hat standing in the way. And I think, you know, those of us who have been around long enough, uh, I don't know if this is passed more fully into Fedora legend, but the uh, the the fake IRC chat from Icon Ryabatsev that described the picture <laughs> of the Fedora project from the outside world. Uh, anyone who is attending this session uh, should read that for, yes. a, for an Smooch, understanding. Smooch is just pulling up the link right now. I am one hundred percent positive. <laughs> you know, and it was uh, and it was a perfect example. It, it, it just showed an organization that. Uh, that was saying a lot of the right things and had a lot of the good intentions, but did not as an organization understand what it was that we were trying to do, really. You know, and I think sort, sort of the engineers had the idea that what we wanted was a better Debian than Debian, right? And so a lot of what I did in those early days was just look at what other projects that were doing that were doing real like we're being real open source projects and saying can we do this can we do that can we do this can we have a fedora documentation team you know who in the community is doing things well let's just create a mailing list and say to those people okay you have permission to do the thing um and for can my we... tenure which was i i think less than a year officially because at some point <laughs> At some point, Matthew Zulik came up to me while I was standing at the urinal in the men's room. And he said to me, so looks like you're doing a whole bunch of Fedora stuff while I'm trying to do other stuff. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, maybe you should just be doing that now. And I said, okay. And then he said, it's a big responsibility. Don't step on your schwanz. And then he left. <laughs> And that is how I became the Fedora project leader. 
you know, he told me the same thing one time, Greg, not in the bathroom, though, but but uh, I asked him for feedback on something, and he said, Max, just do what you think is right, and I'll tell you if you step on your schwanz. <laughs> I'm glad that was a go-to phrase for him. It was certainly yeah. effective uh, in in my context. I'm so glad that I well, never had to run into him in a restroom. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, so a uh, question from Mike McGrath, who might who? say something like that to somebody, um, is uh, what is your favorite, someone in Red Hat has an idea for Fedora uh, that was absolutely bonkers? I've got one. Um, I think I had been Fedora project leader for maybe two weeks or three weeks. And somebody came to me and it says, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to pivot Fedora and we want Fedora to be all about online video. And we're going to be the, the biggest rival to YouTube there is. Okay. That, that was you might win with that one. Eye opening to me. <laughs> Spoiler, that did not happen. That did not happen. I can't beat that. Mike Mike should paste what his answer to that question would be in the chat. Yeah, I'd like to get get Mike's idea on that. Who remembers by the way, talking about things that 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 could have could have you know maybe slightly or too early for their own good. Who remembers mugshot? Greg <laughs> right, mugshot. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean that was like a social networking meme sharing thing way before its time um maybe not really the market red hat should have been going into so that was possibly a fortunate failure in one sense but definitely a before its time idea yeah uh, i remember being at the second red hat summit in nashville yes finding mugshot and just being like all over it and sent, you know just pasting statuses into it constantly during that conference wasn't, it was wasn't pretty it trying cool. to be basically a social network aggregator, like it was trying to glue together like your various experiences. Yes, but you had to be running a Linux desktop to use it. <laughs> <laughs> what could go wrong? Yeah, well. Hmm. There are people out there missing mugshots still. Did 108 come at, from Mugshot? No, no, I was like, what the heck number was it? I was like, there was a thing with a number, but I don't remember what that number was. So I guess we know how that went. A I don't know think the answer. I'm amazed that nobody has come up with the, that nobody has come up with that famous Fedora IRC link yet. Uh, it is just posted. Oh, super. Okay. Yeah, Smooge. Oh. Just it. oh, there it is. Thank you, Smooge. I knew he could do it. Oh, my it. God. Jack is here. He was like, yeah. <laughs> um, for, for the bonkers thing, I can think of several, but they mostly uh, involve imagining that Fedora is a uh, directable resource that can just do something that you know uh, Red Hat would like Fedora to fill that Red Hat's not interested in doing like uh you know with without any resourcing or anything for that idea um uh, and i like you know red hat should be the number one uh linux at universities that's great i agree we definitely should be and i think that you know we, we've got on you know on the ground students who are interested in making that happen but we're not going to become the number one anything anywhere without a sustained effort to do that and just like you should go do that from red hat has always been frustrating um it, it doesn't work that way it's the opposite of what greg was saying the, the, the way things work it's you know empower it empowering people to do the things that they want to do and want to work on rather than telling people what to do i think that's this is definitely yeah. the lore part of of being fpl right and this that particular lore is the lore of the magic wand right <laughs> that, that that it does not exist is right. a constant frustration okay. but also reality <laughs> All right, so let me ask this question. If you did have a magic wand, um, what would you change about the Fedora project? Like, what's one thing you would magic wand to be different? Well, 
well, you're the current FPL. None of the rest of us have been doing that job for a while. I mean, I'd like <laughs> to say that I pay attention to every little bitty detail about Fedora these days, but um, I well, mean, I, I would say the one thing I would change was that it would be a foundation, except we tried that <laughs> and we had to put a bullet in it. So I guess that's not the answer. Matthew, uh, that's a, that's you, magic can you show us the stamp. The, the, uh, I, I went to look for it. I cannot quite sure where it is right now. It's in a box, but I'm not quite sure where it is. It's called the uh, football. Right. We call it the football. Like, okay. I, I know the football is within 50 feet of me. I just don't know which box it's in, and there's a lot of boxes. We made those stamps on Vistaprint, and, and we, we brought them to all the, the, the Fedora board members as the, yeah. as the, as the, and they just said approved, right? It was just the rubber yeah. stamp to. It, it says a, Fedora as board as approved. Yeah, as, it's, a, as a pass-through entity, yes, exactly. Yes. I have a picture um, of myself with the stamp on it, uh, on it being I, me. I can come up with one thing that I would. What what it's related to one of my regrets, uh, and that was that when Eric and I and uh, Matt Wilson went off and started our path, um, we built a lot of automation around building packages, uh, so that. Most things were just uh, change the version number, and we had this really rich policy system where you could the fact that you could easily apply exceptions may re just reduce the effort of building software. And one of the things I regret is that that ended up crashing and burning and not being able. Ultimately, it, some of those ideas influenced uh, software packaging, I think, but I think we lost a lot of opportunity to. Um, make the work of packaging software be a little bit higher level work. Um, and if I have a regret, it's that I didn't find a way when our path crashed and burned to uh, bring that, bring some of those ideas and um, um, practices to Fedora in a way that would have um, helped Fedora out. Yeah, I think we could still use that particular magic wand. Um, I, we've got some some things, uh, an idea called source Git, which is a little bit autom automating things into disk Git that are kind of like that. I think magic wanding that you know two years forward in the way where it is from right now would be would be something I would do. I think I I if I could magic wand something in though, I think a a um, infinitely funded docs team would be where I would, would go with my, with my magic because uh, there's just so much use for that for everybody, for users and for contributors and just all around keeping everything up to date and maintained. I don't know that I, I would, you know, every time you, you, you know, use a magic wand, it's always at the expense of, <laughs> you know, it's like the, you know, one thing changes in the universe and, you know, yeah. whatever it's supposed to unfold actually unfolds in a completely right. different way. Like, I don't know that I would change anything. I said a magic <laughs> wand, not a monkey's paw. Fedora, Fedora is still, you know, the difference? In, in a universe, <laughs> in a world where like, you know, rather than there being like 20 sizable open source projects to choose like i'm actually going to pick a project and go and do it like there's there's literally hundreds of thousands of like you know and you know millions of you know crap repositories but there are a significant number of places where you can invest your time most people you know they drive on by there's never really like this the center of gravity or this sense of belonging that that sort of pulls you in and makes you want to continue to be with those people, right? That is the, the kind of thing that makes us all show up here today and be like, I don't know what we're talking about. Like, I guess they're just gonna let us all talk and we're gonna all get to see each other and we're gonna get to see our friends. And and I still care about all those people. And I can just, you know, I care about all of you guys. And, you know, you don't get that in a lot of projects these days. It's just, you know, it's the hip new thing. Maybe I'll take my PR, maybe not, uh, but, not every project has this, you know, family family feel like Fedora does. Aw, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I No, I, that's no sorry. Some, that's great. Throw some fuzzy it's in. It's true. I'm 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 staring at the face of some of my best friends in the world, like all because of Fedora. Don't yeah. stare. 
you know, we've we've talked a lot about the technical side of Fedora, but I think it's as much the community that we've built around it as that is the, is the important thing. And the technical bits, yeah, they're they're cool, but they're not as important as as the community that we've built. When the AI robots take over the world, we'll have a mailing list, and we'll all still be here for each other, <laughs> unless the robots turn it off. We are we are at their mercy. Yes, the app is for friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so one thing I would want to talk about a little bit, uh, the, the core and extras merge, talking about Fedora lore kind of things. That was a big thing that I think both Max and Greg worked on a lot. Like, um, how, how did that come about? Like that, that was a big, that was a big change. And what was like, what instigated that? And, um, Greg, how did you Greg, make, how did you make that happen? Greg deserves, Greg deserves to start this one. <laughs> Yeah. And how um, many times can you tell the story for different projects, Greg? Yeah. Uh, -huh. uh, you know, we started Fedora Extras. Uh, well, there's the there's the whole Fedora US thing, and there is you know the but fundamentally we had to figure out how we were going to empower our community to build anything at all, and uh, uh, so here's a this this ties back into a couple of things. Um, when I was hired at Red Hat, I was hired as an engineering manager working underneath Gafton. And when Gafton interviewed me, uh, you know, we had a, a good interview and I'm like, well, I hope I get this job because Red Hat would be amazing. And then he asked if I had any questions for him and I asked him what kept him up at night. And he leaned back and he said that our repositories get rooted and we send bad software to all of our customers. Right. And that was his constant concern for years. And he was right to have that concern. So when it came time to come up with a build system, that was the perspective that Gafton brought. And he was very careful about what he wanted to see and how he wanted to see that work. The problem, of course, is that the, the, the horse was already out of the barn in a lot of ways. And people were already building packages that may or may not have been any good. Uh, and when I had that conversation with Seth Vidal, the biggest thing that he impressed upon me was we need a build system. We need a build system that the community can have access to, and we need to get moving. And, you know, and we've been waiting for a year for this build system and we don't have anything. So I said, well, you're building packages, right? And he said, yes. And I said, well, I guess you're in the build system now. And so, you know, he and uh, uh, and and Elliot, who uh, uh, we haven't talked about much, but he was huge in those early days as well. Uh, they were just, uh, you know, uh, cranking out packages. And over time, we ended up uh, with uh, a build system that came largely out of the community that ended up being the incumbent because everyone was building with it. And you know, and, and, and that, so that's kind of how it started. Right. And then, and then we realized that the community needed rules for how packages should look. And Red Hat didn't have those rules because package building at Red Hat was tribal knowledge. There were no clear thou shalt's and thou shalt nots. Right. Uh, there were a, a bunch of different places that you could, you know, pick up knowledge on how to build packages. And one of the earliest uh, works of the Fedora uh, Extras Steering Committee, which then became the Fedora Engineering Steering Committee, was to come up with those rules and to figure out how the community could build packages together that ha had some sort of uh, bar, a bar of quality, some kind of standards. And then we discovered that frequently those packages that were being built in extras were as good or better than, than Red Hat packages because those standards, there were standards that we were adhering to. And people in the community were rightly asking, why is it that there are these packages that are being built by Red Hatters that don't meet the basic standards that we hold to in the community? And I think that that process sort of drawn out over many years was was what what led to ultimately the the, the merging of those of those two entities. Right. Sort of how um, innovation starts at the edges because of need. 
And then if that innovation is powerful enough, it sort of drives to, re to replace the incumbent. Um, so eventually we got rid of core versus extras, I guess it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, that was where I was hoping Max was going to pick up the story because I think someone even asked about this in the chat about what happened to core. Well, I, I, uh, I, you know, the whole thing after that was not just not just unifying standards and practices, but then it was breaking down the final barrier of people will remember the the the, the drums, oh, the drums of well, who actually is allowed to maintain different packages? And do you have to have, you know, certain, you know, certain credentials or a paycheck from a certain person in order to work on certain packages and, and, and blowing, blowing all of that kind of bias and, and, and baggage up was, was kind of the next step along the way, which also, which also led, it was, it was also part of the idea of, it wasn't just, it wasn't just Koji, but it was also, what was the composed tool punji or whatever right and the idea being that the idea being that that we wanted a commons of packages and to give as much freedom as possible to anyone to be able to assemble those into whatever set they wanted from which spins was born um epo, epo came around sometime the same way if we finally figured out how to build packages for fedora why can't we build some of the packages that are missing from rel um so much so much innovation as well as kind of opportunity and and growth of the community which was i think for all of us always a success the success metric we looked at all traces its roots back to that initial thing that greg described of kind of breaking down the the core and extras uh, mentality which had outlived any usefulness it may or may not have had yeah to me i think that's uh, the reason i bring it up is i think that's a defining moment in Fedora's success as a project. Um, I think it's like that, that, that merge, um, I, I guess it, there's been a progression of things over the years that have made Fedora successful. And to me, as, especially as someone who was in the project you know, from outside of Red Hat, like um, that, that was fundamental to it being a real open source community project. Well, I think that also was sort of the turning point of, you know, when it used to be like, I'm going to go work over here on product stuff for like four months and I'm going to literally just ignore everyone. And then, you know, Oh, I'm back. It's time. And everyone's like, we've been waiting for you to like, let me have permission to do something to, you know, employees actually just participating in those, you know, in the community and in the, you know, community sub communities on, you know, like a regular basis. Like we work upstream, like not, sometime when we're not working on this other thing, but like it sort of streamlined all of, you know, Red Hat's, uh, you know, how we make the sausage here, I guess is the only phrase I can come up with. Um, all right, so- Speaking of sausages, I wonder how the other session's going. <laughs> <laughs> so I, think that, I knew Max was gonna go there. The yeah. must indicate the progress, I'm sure Wait. if we- um. All right, so we've got about t 10 minutes left here. Um, I'm, I'm going to take advantage and say, uh, ask, um, what advice do you have for me that I that I could I could hear from you at this point? Or if you don't want to make it too personal, like for the Fedora project going forward, like things things that um, you see going on, you just want to be busybody about or just suggestions or whatever. Man, that was 15 years ago. I got no advice for you. <laughs> Have you accumulated any wisdom in the meantime? Not FPL advice, just whatever. Thank you, Robin. I've got one, and it's one that uh, I believe, well, so when I was going to eventually be whatever, Jared was FPL, and then it was like, someone's good, someone, and, and Greg came and he was like, you're going to be the next FPL, and I was like, no, I'm not like, just, just <laughs> shut up. Like, don't, don't say that. And I'm pretty sure that's probably, I think we said that to you, Matthew, and I'm pretty sure he may have also conned Paul that way. So get Greg to find the next FPL for me. Is that what you're okay. saying? <laughs> no, I think the, the point I was trying to make was, you know, like from day one, you should always start thinking about like, you know, Who's after me? Not not because you know you could get eaten by a raptor at any you know god given moment, but you know it's part of the you know how you also 
constantly remember to, you know, grow and nurture new leadership, um, you know, identifying people and making sure that they're, you know, like the succession path, I guess, if, if nothing else. Um, and I, I will still tell you, Matthew, you should always think about who might be next, because one day you might um, decide to just table flip and like, screw this, I'm going home. Bye. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Some days that's tempting. One of my greatest hopes was always that uh, that Fedora would serve as a, a place where we would find the next generation of leaders from outside of the company and use Fedora as the mechanism to identify that talent and bring that talent inside of the community. It's one of the reasons that from very early days, I tried so hard to put real responsibility, not pretend responsibility, but real responsibility into the hands of volunteers with, with as much support as Red Hat could reasonably give, but make sure that people in the community were empowered. And the people who came out of that community are here, right? Paul came out of that community. Mike McGrath came out of that community. I remember when he was at Orbitz, and I remember that chilly uh, session interview with uh, 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 some waitress interactions that I won't go into now, but it was a memorable lunch. Um, and and this is, you know, and, and Fedora has traditionally, from my perspective, been successful in identifying those leaders and, and, and bringing them in to become uh, leaders of Red Hat in the open source world. And my advice to you would be, make sure you never forget that uh, and make sure that a significant part of your emphasis on it as your job. Thank you. Um, okay, so for final thing, um, let's have some fun things. There's been a lot of questions here, but I'm, pick, I'm picking this one. What was the most fun moment you could remember off the top of your head about being the FPL? I can give you one. So um, I remember getting, uh, ch changing it. So, all right, let me step back a second. So I came to Red Hat and to the FPL job uh, after a long career elsewhere. Um, I worked for in public service for the US government. I had an official passport, et cetera. And I'll never forget going with Max to basically pick up on a very quick basis my regular plain old vanilla citizen passport just like you know every other uh you know joe out there um and picking that up for the purpose of really quickly you know we were going to turn around and go to uh the fudcon that was being held in berlin and i think at the last minute i think i discovered like oh crap i don't have a passport we need to get this handled and so we got that handled and you know, very quickly, I think just within a few days, you know, we were on a flight out to Berlin, and seeing the the fun and the passion and of Fedora in a completely different country that I'd not I'd never been to Germany before at that point, and you know, being outside the U.S. for you know purposes of Fedora was very novel to me at that point. Like I'd traveled, but never uh, you know for open source purposes and just seeing the passion that people had there uh was really cool um got to meet a whole bunch of a whole bunch of people where you know i still i'm still generally in contact with those folks today and uh i'll just remember that as being a, a really really fun trip i'm gonna say it was when leonard introduced the idea of system d <laughs> good uh, times <laughs> no I, I i agree with paul on that like you know despite the fact that it's very 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 cold at least every time i go like going to fosdom and seeing everybody there and being like oh my god like a week with my european crew and you know fighting your way to the you know, especially when you're me, I'm like, excuse me, from down here, can can we part ways so that I can please get a beer at Delirium, uh, you know, and then, you know, stand in the corner, just, you know, being mad or being happy or, you know, hearing people's stories and, you know, and meeting new people, like people you never would have expected to have met and, you know, them just being like, 
all these things and how fired up you get about, you know, just certain items. I remember someone came up to me and they were like, they worked at Blizzard, they used Fedora, and they were just really mad that like they couldn't get like, I don't even remember what it was like. They were mad that Rel and the cloud weren't really pals or something like that. And oh, I remember it was that they didn't have, or the cloud image had cups in it. And like, <laughs> I think I was on a rampage about that for like, I don't know, four years. And I think at some point nodding eventually sorted out, you know, the uh, uh, comps situation for that. But, you know, it was just, you know, those little stories sometimes just, you know, burn in your soul until you really want to convince somebody to fix it for you because I, I can't fix it myself. I, Robin, I like that your idea of a fun time you had in Fedora was being angry at something. Um, That's on brand. It is on brand. Hi. Have you met? My answer to favorite Fedora memory was supposed to be post FPL, but still Red Hat was supposed to be organizing the Wiener Roast at Southeast Linux Fest in honor of Beefy Miracle winning. <laughs> and 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 that 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 remains to this day the only time I tried to exert influence over the community and failed to get what I wanted. And, and well, uh, but, but at that the, still, at let that be a sting. lesson to you. That still okay. stings. Right. Right. Max. I got the artwork in the desktop from the community, but I couldn't get a, a damn release name. <laughs> well, we did get it, and then we did fund, you know, a whole hot dog, you know, come out. Yeah, but that was later. Dog. Yeah, that was that oh, was second yeah. around. You drove the van there though that time, I think. On it's that speed van. Van. The speed van. Have, yes. Have, um, have, have you seen the new beefy great. cartoon um, things the design team is coming up with? There's we're you're gonna see more beefy miracle in, in the future in Fedora. I'm things, so. there, I'm, I'm, I don't know that we need to. A uh, young talent. That's all I'll say. Are we young <laughs> talent? Move on. Second generation talent. That's yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Legacy, as we like to call. If, if she's if my daughter's watching, she is mortified right now that that. <laughs> Matt, I had Matt. I had one one small comment I wanted to get in before the before the clock. Yeah, ended, but which absolutely. Is, which is which is that, um, I imagine the, the Fedora community has some general idea of this, but but I, I don't know if people realize it so strongly. Which is that, um, I I am convinced that if you look at the entire sphere of influence that that starts with the Fedora upstream. Right, um, Fedora is the is the tip is the tip of what has to be the largest Linux install base on the planet by a mile, and 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 the 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 gravity of that, both from a positive way and the responsibility of it and the opportunity of that, continues to be for me, I think the most impressive the most impressive and and, and magical thing about the about the Fedora community and and. Uh, thought that was worth saying yeah absolutely and you know it's it's not just those of you, the, the people here but a lot of you were instrumental in making that happen making it happen that that thing there is a community-led uh community directed project which is amazing and of course of course the, the community our, ourselves made that happen as well but it, it needed it needed some guidance and pushing and yelling at people at Red Hat and things to make it really happen. And so thanks to all of you for doing that. Um, and, th this and I want to awesome. say thank you. Oh, I was going to say, I want to say thanks to every one of you as the founding Fedora project leader for carrying this torch forward. And you're the reason that my kids now run Fedora and manage their Fedora systems themselves. It's, it's generational. Thank you. Amazing. Uh, yeah, thanks to everybody for coming here. Um, I hope we can do this again in the future. I, maybe I have a dream of doing this in person. Wouldn't that be awesome? Um, Greg, you got I, nothing I, to do? That's right. Greg, you're, uh, you're, you're in charge of organizing this. Um, I don't think you understand what retired means. <laughs> He's got tired all over again. He's got hockey games to go to. I've got, I've got right. anything I want to do, but not that. To do. More song <laughs> All right, fair. Well, I've got I've got more talks to go off to here. There's a lot more of this conference to go. Uh, again, thank you, everybody. It's been a blast. Love you all so much.
Thanks for putting yeah, this together, Matthew. Oh, Thanks for putting this together. Oh, you're Fedorian. 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 Oh, you're Fedor